Hey, good morning. It's Thursday morning. Hope you're uh, doing well today as we uh, spend some time on God's Word together on this uh, beautiful day. It's always good to get to spend some time drinking some coffee together and uh, reflecting on God's Word together with each of you. So thanks for thanks for uh, being with us as we continue to journey through Ephesians. Today we'll be in Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, and we're going to... Um, the next, the next few verses in Ephesians 5 are very interesting to me, a verse that I really thought about a lot, uh, dealing with family and marriage, dealing with relationships, and then dealing with spiritual warfare. So I, I'm, I've been spending a lot of time thinking on these passages for next, the, a lot the last few months. And um, so we're going to kind of walk slowly through these and, um, you know, talk about uh, talk about some of these things together these next few days. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll spend some time uh, slowly in Ephesians the next uh, the next uh, few few days. Um, but today we're we'll in Ephesians chapter five. We're we'll be reading verses one through twenty of Ephesians chapter five, where Paul writes these words: Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity in any, of any kind are greed must not even be mentioned among you, as it is proper among all saints. Entirely out of places obscene, silly, and vulgar talk, but instead, let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person uh, or one who is greedy, that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be associated with them. For once you were in darkness, but now the Lord, now in the Lord you were in you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to God. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful to even men, even, even mention what some people do in, do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is in light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand that the will of the Lord, what the will, will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs among yourself, singing and making melodies to the Lord your God in your hearts, giving thanks to the Father at all times for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I really like that um, little section there towards the end. We says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This section here talks a lot about light and darkness. Uh, we see the first part, a uh, notion to, um, to, to, be, to be aware of the works of darkness. Where he tells us uh, early on, he says, um, fornication, impurity, Greed must not be even mentioned among you. Entirely out of pl out of places, obscene, silly, and vulgar talk. But instead, it'd be let there be thanksgiving. So, verse eight says, "For once you were in darkness, you were for once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Let us children of the light." So we see that that continual battle there between uh, darkness and light. Living as children of the darkness, living in living. And Paul here says, "You are dark. You were darkness. Now you are light." So we see this continual battle and struggle that we face and that we see to live as we used to live uh, as children of darkness or to live as God calls us to live, which is children of light. And we see, as Paul likes to do, we see contrasting uh, lifestyles here. We see, um, we see um, uh, obscene talk, uh, fornication, impurity, greed, but instead we see thanksgiving. Um, then we see in the end, we see to sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs uh, in verse uh, verse 19. Uh, we see that contrast in the end between 18 and 19 between getting drunk uh, with wine, that is debauchery, we fill the spirit and sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. So we see there this, this constant battle, this constant juxtaposition between light and darkness, between living living in the dark and living in the light. And um. That's why I really like the verse where it says, sleeper awake, uh, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. That got me thinking about how, how um, you know how it is when you wake up in the morning? And um, I, don't know, I don't know how you sleep. I don't know what your sleeping situation is. But uh, 
our room is usually pretty dark. Um, and uh, we're, you know, we, we Holly and I kind of have the same pattern in the mornings we wake up. Uh, most mornings, if I'm being, if I'm doing right, I have my coffee. Uh, it cuts on pretty early. And so when I wake up, um, <laughs> if you, you remember in the office, how Michael Scott liked to wake, wake up to the smell of bacon in the morning. Um, I like to wake up to the smell of coffee in the morning. So many mornings I'll have my coffee pot cut on. I'm not gonna tell you what time because you'll think bad of me, but it's pretty early. My, my coffee pot, pot cuts on pretty early so that when I wake up, it's it's waiting on me. But um, the mornings when I, and so those mornings I get up, I, you know, I, I usually listen to the new, I have a, a old phone that, that uh, sits by my bed that all it has is music on it that I listen to podcast or the news while I'm asleep. And um, I get up, I, I turn my alarm off, I, I, I turn my little phone off, and I go usually in the dark to get my first cup of coffee, and I sit there and pray and think and reflect and get my day started. Those are the days that I'm doing right. Uh, the days I'm not doing right, I turn my phone off, and I go back to bed. And those morning what typically happens is because my wife's a better person than I am. She gets up, she wakes up, she does her exercise and all that. And so she has a little rolling machine in our room. And so a lot of mornings um, she'll get up and, and, and get her day started and come into row and uh, she'll cut the light on. And like, it's always glaring, you know, that first, that first light of the day when you're still in bed and when, you, when, you, when you're still covered up and you're still good and cozy, that first light of the day is always kind of shocking and always kind of blinding and always kind of, whoa, that was pretty bright. So um, that's what I thought about when, I, when Paul here says, sleep or awake, rise from the dead, and Christ's light will shine upon you. The days when I'm doing right and being faithful, what I should be doing, I'm already up. I've already got my cup of coffee. I've already had a time of prayer. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm up and going, and life is good. And, and the light uh, at that point is not jarring. It's not jarring. It's not, it's not too much. It's just right. Just right. The days when I when I when I when I catch that extra few minutes of sleep, I don't get up like I should, or I don't do like I ought to. And she comes into row that first light of for the day. First light of the day is kind of whoa, 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 cut that back off. That's pretty bright. I don't need that. When we're used to living in the darkness, when we're used to living in our selfish desires, when we're used to living like for what we want to do. This this call of Christ. This call to sacrifice, this call to uh, faithfulness, this call to prayer and fasting and service and loving of our enemies, this call that Christ has upon our life does not seem appealing. In fact, it seems harsh. It seems very harsh when compared to the light of dark, the life of darkness, which is all about doing what you want to. That seems fun, man. You need to do what you want to. Live as you want. But we know that that life of darkness does not lead to life in the end. And that comfort that the life of darkness gives you is only, it's a false comfort. It's a false, it's a false hope. It's a false reality. It is not truly life-giving. Life comes from being in the light. Life comes from being in the light. Because only when we're in the light, only when we're in the light can we truly see can we truly see where life is found? And can we truly see what's worth living for? So, sleep or awake, rise from the dead, and Christ's light will shine upon you. We have to wake up. We have to wake up from our darkness, have to wake up from our selfish desires, have to wake up from our stuff, wake up from our, our pride and greed and the stuff that seems like it's a great idea that seems comforting but isn't it's those these things sow the seeds of death they are not sowing the seeds of life so wake up that first light might might really get to you but that first light shows us the path of christ that first light shows us what life really is so today my prayer for all of us where no, whatever no matter where we find ourselves is that we can truly walk in the light of Christ and that we can wake up from whatever darkness we find ourselves in and that we can find his life and find his light in our life and live in the light. So wake up, be faithful today, follow the path of Christ wherever it leads. And when we follow his light into the future, we walk unafraid because his light shines the way. 
Hey, love you guys. Praying for you today. Have an awesome rest of your Thursday, and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning or Friday morning. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.